Hello everyone here at OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback review of the Sony Xperia SP in 2018. This is a smartphone that was first launched in 2013, making it 5 years old. So in this video we'll be discussing whether it's still worthwhile as a budget or a backup phone, and just to see how Sony has evolved since then with their designs and smartphones. So back in 2013, this phone wasn't quite Sony's top of the line model, that's still the Xperia X series, but this was kind of their middle of the road offering. It's not quite budget, but it also has a few touches that make it feel more premium. For instance, the frame of the phone is made out of metal, so it actually feels quite solid in the hand. And there's also this very interesting transparent acrylic plastic on the very bottom here that uh, is kind of in line with Sony's design philosophy at the time. Not only does it look cool when you're gripping it and you're able to see parts of your hand, but it actually lights up in multiple uh, LED colors for different types of notifications charging the phone or simply taking a look at the gallery and determined by the prominent colors in the photos you can see the LED lights start to shift and change uh, the colors respectively so it's actually a pretty cool trick it doesn't add too much functionality in just in some of these music and video as well as photo apps but for notifications and things like that you can display the phone anywhere and you're able to very quickly glance and see if a call or a message has come in Otherwise, the phone has a 4.6 inch display that has an HD resolution, which is 720p, so not quite as pixel dense as we want from a more expensive phone in 2018, but it's still plenty sharp and has Sony's Bravia engine borrowed from their televisions to give you a pretty impressive display uh, for a smartphone. The phone has an 8 megapixel camera on the back with autofocus and an LED flash. The phone came with 1 gig of RAM and was powered by the Snapdragon S4 Pro processor clocked at 1.7 gigahertz. And uh, I would say that overall performance is decent, but no longer very quick because it's only a dual core processor. It's not even quad core. That's something to very quickly keep in mind. So other devices that we reviewed recently or did a throwback on around the same time or the same era would be the original HTC One. So you can see the size difference there. This is again 4.6 inches versus 4.7. And Sony actually has much smaller bezels because it doesn't need to incorporate the front facing boom sound speakers. It's actually pretty impressive considering they have this transparent bar but the bezels on the bottom are still pretty slim for a phone from five years ago. And here's the recent HTC First that was also from 2013 that we checked out. 4.3 inches versus 4.7, so a lot smaller here. And along the right-hand edge, there's a volume rocker, a dedicated power key that's very similar to the flagship Xperia X line. It's super ergonomic, it's round in shape, which is a very Sony thing to do, and it's just very comfortable and easy to grip and access. There's even a two-stage camera shutter key that you can tap on to launch the camera and then very quickly snap an image. On the top, there's a 3.5mm there's a 3 headphone jack. Underneath the hood, we have a 2,320 milliamp hour capacity battery, which was considered decent at the time, and even today, the standby mode of the phone is extremely strong. In fact, I turned it on and just left it sitting for about a week, and the battery only drained about 5-6%, to which is incredible for a phone that's over 5 years old and used. Alright, so let's take a closer look at the user interface. So the phone originally came with Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, but it's since been upgraded to 4.3. Back then, it was definitely a heavier skin. There's your drag down notification tray, which has a few kind of uh, quick launch shortcuts on the top. There's also notifications down below, so not too much changes there. Just some of the wallpapers have been tweaked, and of course we have a uh, Sony suite of apps that are baked in, including access to Walkman for music, uh, their own album, as well as their own movie and app stores to complement the regular Google services. So there are quite a few preloaded uh, apps that are on board, but as a whole, the phone still feels quite snappy, which is one of the things that Sony tends to do well with. We checked out some of their other phones in retro reviews in the past, like the Xperia Play, again, filled with lots of Sony's proprietary apps, but the phone still feels pretty snappy in regular navigation. I can pinch out to create new widgets, apps, wallpapers, and themes. Again, very different from stock Android, but again, pretty responsive and at least gives you additional settings to change and tweak it as you would like. In the app tray, we have access to different ways of sorting the apps, either by alphabetical or by most commonly used, and there's even a universal search on the very top. Speaking of, the multitasking menu is again very customized by Sony. For a phone that has only one gig of RAM, it still actually works quite well when it comes to toggling back and forth between open applications. They're always displayed on the right edge, and you have access to a few shortcuts of apps that you may commonly use. For instance, there's a calculator, there's also a voice recorder that you can simply tap on the multitasking key to access with 
one click. So that's actually a pretty neat idea. And some of these other apps that are one click are actually floatable. They remind me of widgets so that you can resize them and you can be doing other things in the background and they basically don't get in the way. Of course, I can close them up as well. So that's actually a pretty cool touch from Sony. Time to take a quick look at the camera and see how well it's fared. The interface is actually pretty standard for a phone of its age, and Sony has put in quite a few intelligent modes to help you take a more optimized photo, including superior auto that automatically detects the mode that you're in. You can also create a panorama. I can select a specific scene, whether it's sports, uh, whether it's night. Uh, HDR is also built on here as well. There's a party, there's sports, landscape. So again, quite a few different options for a mid-tier phone. Perhaps it's due to the excellent display that's on the Xperia SP, but I still find the overall image quality to be better than expected. I recently did a quick comparison with devices like the BlackBerry Priv along other uh, phones that we wanted to do a quick throwback review on recently and the SP actually came out on top. And a few other images to showcase that. So this is a tree with a few flowers on it. And again, the dominant color is red. So it's actually changed the transparent strip into that pinkish hue, which I think is actually pretty cool. And here's another flower, again, a pretty impressive overall result. These yellow roses, which also come out very well. So overall, I'm actually quite impressed. Now there is, again, a little bit of, over, of overexposure here in the skies. And if you turn on HDR, of course it works, but on an older phone, it's gonna take significantly longer for the image to process. Just some other shots very quickly. Uh, the camera is also capable of recording uh, full HD resolution video. So no real complaints when it comes to the uh, quality of the video footage either, but it doesn't have any optical stabilization. All right, so exiting out of the camera interface, let's jump into a quick demo of the web browsing capabilities. Uh, for this, I'm just still going to use Chrome. So here's a keyboard. It does feel a little bit cramped because I have gotten used to much larger uh, phone displays by now, but uh, overall it's decent. It's a Sony keyboard, so it's not the stock uh, kind of version that you see from Android, but it does give you predictive text, and you can always switch the orientation of the phone's display to have a more comfortable typing experience. Funny enough, New York Times actually seems to be down right now. I tried it with another device and it simply would not load up, so other sites are loading fine. And I've pulled up CNET, which is pretty comparable when it comes to overall page complexity. And again, it has many you know, ads as well as videos, scrolling elements that are difficult for lower power, lower end devices to generally uh, fare with. But on this phone, it seems to be doing an okay job. Obviously, it's not going to be the fastest experience. We see some unfilled text, some checkerboarding as I'm scrolling, but everything still feels actually quite smooth. You're not seeing some jitteriness. There's a slight hesitation before scrolling, but the scrolling motion, as you can see here, is smooth without any drop frames. And because the screen is HD in terms of its resolution, at a smaller size, like 4.7 inches, it still is plenty sharp, so you can read back text without any problems. So overall, web browsing fares much better than I really expected. Uh, performance is just a little bit slower, have to wait a few seconds longer for complex pages, but quick searches on the internet actually load up still pretty quickly. So for instance, if I do something like the OS reviews on Google here, you can see that it's loading up the full desktop version of Google uh, without too many issues there. Speaker quality, also pretty good. It's uh, better than average, I would say, in terms of overall sound reproduction. It actually has a pretty good depth to the sound. Um, again, Sony also has a good amount of uh, history with making great audio products with their Walkman line of MP3 players and tape players in the past. They certainly do have the potential to make excellent audio products. So uh, just one of the reasons why uh, Sony, again, does have so many fans. On this phone, though, it's definitely not the highlight either, just because the speakers are mounted on the rear, so it gets covered up pretty easily. They're not front-facing. And speaking of audio, let's take a quick look at the Walkman player that comes preloaded. There are actually quite a few sample songs that Sony have bundled this with, and you saw the light strip pop onto life again. So based on the cover art, uh, it actually changes the light. You can also set it as a visualization, so as you're playing music, it continues to flash and strobe, which is actually very cool, especially in the dark. Again, if you're in a club or something, and you can just quickly glance over and see if there's something happening with your phone. Uh, so turning this back on, we can take a look at, again, the music that's included. It's sorted by albums, and uh, the, if you've used any other Sony device in the past, including MP3 player or even a PSP, then you kind of know what the interface experience is like. 
and there's additional fancy animations uh, and visualizations for the music as well as they are kind of running in the background here. So there's again a lot of work that Sony did. Other elements of performance including access to the Play Store and downloading games and titles, everything still works but of course you'll have to wait for a bit longer than you're probably used to on newer phones for things to load. Um, actually performance is kind of comparable when it comes to loading times to the original HTC One, which is a little surprising because the One does have more powerful hardware, at least on paper, uh, with a quad-core chipset. But on the Sony, it's not bad at all. The only thing that I did observe is it gets kind of warm after using it for longer than 30 minutes around the center here, but it's never hot. Uh, I think the plastic does a good job of uh, dissipating the thermals, and the metal frame still makes the phone still feel quite comfortable when you're holding it. So that's basically our revisited look at the Sony Xperia SP. It's a phone I think many people have mostly forgotten about, but I think it's a pretty unique device just because it's not quite the attention seeker that the Xperia X series uh, became, but at the same time there are quite a few unique touches that uh, were borrowed from premium devices like that, such as a metal frame, as well as this really cool transparent look. Uh, Sony, of course, does have a history with trying to push out transparent devices. Uh, they actually made the Xperia Pureness, which was a phone that came out in the early 2000s, I believe, that had a transparent screen that you can actually see through. But if you're looking for a distinctive phone, if you're looking for a backup device, uh, and you can find this for, let's say, around $30 to $40, I would say it's potentially worth taking a closer look at as a unlocked phone. So you can check out more details about the Xperia SP in the links down below, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been our throwback of this very distinctive Sony Xperia mid-end phone from 2013.